Hey everybody. Today we have invited y'all back to our beach vacation like last year to Galveston. We have a family reunion every year and this year is probably our biggest one yet with over 50 people that will be here today. We have some various very talented people in our group. Of course, they're not the, they're the the married in bunch. So, <laughs> we're adding talent to the group. And this is Angela, Chris's wife, and she does Okay, I have to say this right. I never get it right, and I wonder if you can say it. Charcuterie, did I say it right? Yes. yes. So, how do you say it, Opal? Charcuterie. You yes. got it, you got it. They have, what are you, go into y'all's, what are your kids, everybody calls uh, security? So my brother-in-law, Robert, yes, I'm calling you out. He can never remember the name, so he calls it a security board. And my little tiny tot, Lennon, calls it a tootie board. So you can call it whatever you want. We are making we're making a board, we're making two boards for the guests. She's already made the child version. Look at this, isn't it wonderful? And I'm gonna let her explain it to you, but uh, tell her tell you what's in it. But this is the children's charcuterie board, and then we're going to do a tutorial. She's gonna show us how she makes the other board, and maybe you can make it. I know I can't. That's why I hire <laughs> Angela to to do my events. But anyways, here we go. She's going to first explain this a little bit to you, what type of cheese is and, and why she came up with this version for a kitty board. Go ahead, show us what you got. Okay, so I'm going to explain the kids board. I thought it would be fun to do a beachy theme since we're all on the beach. And so I kind of chatted with my niece and picked my child's favorite things. So our ocean has blueberries and we bought some cute little gummies of fish and dolphins and seahorses. We made a cute little sea turtle out of green grapes and kiwi. We decided to put a sun in there with some mandarin oranges. And we've got our sand, which is a combination of Monterey Jack and mozzarella cubed cheese with some cute little lobsters on top. Very thoughtful. That's, the kids are gonna love eating that. What do you think, Opal? Are you excited? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Looks good. All right, so we're gonna get started with our charcuterie board for adults and kids whatever they like so this board i have five different cheeses that i'm going to use i've got some gouda blocks already cut up because that's easy we did some hatch pepper cheddar over here because that is a seasonal thing and you have to try a new cheese right we've got a chardonnay bellavitano because white wine is just really nice in the sun and we've got a Robusto Gouda just to mix it up, give you a sharper, harder Gouda to work with. And then my personal favorite, Manchego, a Spanish cheese. I love spicy, or hard, I like the Gouda. The Gouda is probably my favorite. I like Robusto cheeses. Yes, yeah, so it's always nice to start with your cheeses on the board first because then you know how you're styling those, you know how you're placing them. Yeah. And so we're just gonna kind of roll with that. Well, and it always looks like I could do this, but when I start doing this, it does not look like her boards. <laughs> and you know, even when I set all of this out and get going, I always end up having to mess with it a little bit because it's just not placed where I actually want it to be placed. You can come over here, Ada. Over here so you can watch for Here, you can stand right here. We're going to take one piece and have it like this and then we're going to take this piece and we're going to flip it this way and we're going to do every other. Do you want to grab this piece? Yep, we're going to put it right there and go ahead. You want to grab the other ones? We're going to do eight pieces. Flip it around. Yeah, turn around like this. All right, so there's four. Now, what was the name of that cheese? This is the Manchego cheese. There's is that the one you were saying earlier, Otto? Mm -hmm. Is that the one that you liked, buddy? Wait, so we're so gonna, what is this board? This is this. This is the board that is going to have. This is the cheese board. Uh -huh. This is the cheese board. Yeah. Well, pay while she's doing this. Pay attention to the boards. We think you think you have to have all the the wooden boards and stuff. She's found these boards. Where you got these at Dollar I got General. these at the Dollar Tree. I thought they would be super fun for summer. They're bright. They're colorful. I really like that they're lifted right here, so it keeps everything in place. So you don't have to spend a ton of money on a board. These were a dollar. Now you can and they're reusable. Simple. Yes. 
we're gonna just kind of I like to with your harder cheeses like your Parmesan's your Robusto Gouda or even your sharp your English sharp cheddars just those tougher cheeses instead of just trying to slice them it's always always just so much easier to chunk them up because they break so easily as it is. So did you do, is there, was there a special cutting technique or anything? So there is actually, you can use a specific cheese knife that has kind of like a, almost like a snake tooth, jagged edge type thing to do it. I personally have found, it is just easier to break it with your hands. Yeah. <laughs> I just take it with my hands, but. Uh, so you don't have to use all the fancy stuff. You don't have to use the fancy stuff. It's, it's a personal choice. Yeah, and what kind of cheese did you say this is? This is just a regular Gouda. Fan mm. favorite. Nobody gets disappointed with person. that one. Sure. All right. Gouda and olives. Gouda and olives. And we're just going to grab some of this. And we're going to clearly have a lot left over, but that's okay. We're... We're gonna roll with it and we'll have to replenish because this clan is going 50 to 50 people. Eat it up. Okay, so we've got our cheese place. So now you kind of know what you're working with, right? So from here, I like to do my meats. And so today I have some calabrese slices, some pepperoni, and Italian dry salami. So I, you, you always start with the cheeses and place them and then go mm -hmm. from there. Okay. Because mm -hmm. your but, cheeses are typically doing a lot of the work you know you you've got this fanned out and you've got the zipper effect here and then the cube and chunked effect there so it's just really nice to place that and have it settle one before we start the meats we are actually going to place our honeys and our olives and such that are already um in pre-containers because you need to make sure that there's space for those as well so where do you get containers like that? So these are palm leaf containers and I have them in a square form as well. And the boards that I make for other people that I sell, I use palm leaf plates as well. They're disposable, they're compostable, they hold up well, and they they really look nice too because they're that lighter they color do, they, yeah. and it allows everything else to pop. So we're gonna add some honey today. Honey is just, it's so good, especially on Manchego. And we've got these cute little honey oh, zippers. Cute. Again, I got these on that's Amazon. Cute. I would think even some of these, like the fruit spread and some of those things, I see some of the cool different stuff like that at um, Home Goods. Yes. Yeah, they have some interesting stuff that you don't normally see. Everywhere. You know what? And a lot of people get stuff at Home Goods as well. Mm -hmm. I personally have just not had the right luck there, but I just may not be looking at the right time. So we're gonna wait to place these other little guys because we're gonna place them on the board towards the end. Uh, but we are gonna go ahead and fold our meats. Are y'all ready? Oh, there's a trick to this. There is a trick to this. Okay, let's move this over. Okay, so there's multiple ways that you can fold meats. You just have to find your jam and what you really like. I like to kind of break mine up so you're not doing that while you're holding a bunch of meat in your hand. Okay, so the easiest way, you fold it in half, right? And then you fold it in half again. Okay. Then from there, you can do whatever you want. I personally enjoy folding it and keeping it all the same direction. Mm hmm But you can turn it around. Oh, like you did the cheese here? Mm-hmm, so you can turn it around like this and it gives it a little depth and dimension. Oh yeah. You can even put it in between here and it just kind of gives it, let's get another gives piece more space. In. Gives it more space, gives it a little different. So it's basically look. putting it in fours and then just figuring out the, Yeah, and your figuring personal. out, yeah, your personal preference, whatever you like. So we're gonna do a strand over here and then I'm gonna show you guys how you can do a salami rose if that is something that you are interested in. Yeah, we won't do it on the board today, but. We'll give a little demonstration of it. So how did you learn how to do all of this? I love to host. I love to host my friends. Um, my girlfriends and I have been doing charcuterie boards at girls weekends for years. And then a couple years ago, I hosted a Christmas party and really realized how much I liked it. And then I just kind of started watching people on Instagram 
and figured out how to do it mm -hmm. and just practiced. Well, and it was, I mean, you said you've been doing it for years. It's really kind of just now become a big deal. It, it I mean, it is saturated. The charcuterie is. world is saturated, but it's so much fun. And there are so many incredibly creative women out there that are doing this and they're awesome. Yeah, there definitely is. I've seen a lot of nice ones. Coming out with some great ideas. Typically, I, I I think I'm a good cook. I cook well, but I don't. I'm not always good about making it pretty. Just tasting good. So <laughs> this is really nice. I don't think I'm. I don't. I guess I just don't take the time. I'm always in a hurry. I think that's the majority of the people, and that's why you've got people like myself and others mm -hmm. who are just. Well, that's out why there. we pay you to do it. We okay, so we're gonna go ahead and do a little bit of pepperoni. Who doesn't love pepperoni? Is I that love everyone's pepperoni. favorite pizza? I love pepperoni. I like pepperoni. Yes. So we're just gonna you lay like some of this pizza. in here and sausage. Why don't sausage do pizza. its thing. So also another key component that I always pay attention to, and I'm pretty certain majority of everyone does, when you're laying your meats and your cheeses and everything else, you wanna pay attention to your color scheme too, what you've got going on. You kinda of wanna break up the monotony of the color, right? Mm -hmm. So you don't want too many cheeses next to each other. And you know, we might put a little kiwi on top of here so it doesn't look so the same color. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's something to consider so you're too. Just, so you're saying like after you get it all together when you add the fruit, that kind of breaks yes. up the color? Absolutely, absolutely. So you just have this. Yeah. Board. So your eye booming. Is, so your eye has different. Has, yes, has exactly. Place to go. Exactly. You know what? We might make a we might make a salami rose. Okay. So there's multiple ways to do the salami rose. You can do the champagne glass method, which is the easiest way to do it. I have found after doing that and after doing it the way that I'm going to show you, I prefer this way more. Again. I don't really know how other people are doing this. This just seems to work for me. Yeah. And so that's how I like to do it. So you just, you fold in half and right here we're using calabrese. So I always put it inside here a little bit and you get about six pieces going folded in oh, half. You fold them into each other a little bit. And you kind of fold them into each other so they hang tight. So basically overlapping a little mm -hmm. bit. And like, it could be like clouds. <laughs> it does kind of look like clouds, Opal. <laughs> okay, what do we have here? How many pieces do I have, guys? Count them, Opal, for us. One, two, five. three, four, five, six. No, oh, five. now we got six. Yeah. Then what you do is you start from one corner and you start folding in. Okay? So we're going to fold in here. And you don't have to be too terribly tight but just to kind of get it together. That's actually pretty easy to do. Right? And then you kind of like start breaking it out a little bit. Not too much like I just did there. Got a little hefty. But imperfection is okay too. Yes, and then what I do to kind of make the I'll leaves, I'll the fold tree. it, but I won't fold it directly in half. I'll kind of let the outside layer be a little higher to kind of give some more dimension to the rose. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm hmm And then you kind of place it around. And a lot of people put these in cups so that they hold. I'm just going to kind of place it. And because I find once you start adding other things to it, it holds in place. It will hold it in place. So it's not going to look perfect in this moment, but there's essentially your salami rose. Right? And that looks good. And to me, Sometimes imperfection is what's perfect exactly. because and nothing's perfect. We're gonna go ahead and add another little piece. Why not? But Why? What we should do is if like um, <laughs> like buy more fruit. Oh, we like, like all the fruit. Oh, this you like, like the fruit? Or maybe we can like well, oh, yeah. we oh, look at all the fruit. You got all kinds of blueberries over here oh, and some like, Yeah. Oh, but this is like everything on goat cheese. So we are gonna go ahead and start adding some grapes. Okay, key to grapes, y'all. This took me a minute to learn. And ever since, I'm kicking myself for never doing this. You don't pull your grapes off the vine. Keeping them on the vine allows more texture and for your grapes to look perfect on a board. 
Okay. Oh, so you, you uh, Yeah, so when they're cut like this, you can kind of place them. That's true, because they just kind of would fall off of mm -hmm. it. But then, we've got this little spot right here, so you want to fill it in. So you just kind of, you shove grapes in there. That looks good. And look at that. Well, mm -hmm. I know. Hey, you're supposed <laughs> to laugh at me. There we go. All right, so now there's your key to your grapes. Now we can start adding all the other fun stuff. Yeah. So let's get some cornichons in here, better known as baby pickles. But this everyone really loves nice. pickles. Thank you so much. I'm loving all my little helpers I've got here. So you just kind of get them in here and place them the way that you want them before you. We're gonna add another nut. Edit my part out. The other nut that I like. <laughs> I really like Marcona <laughs> almonds. Do you guys want to try Marcona almonds? Yes, I do. Okay, here we go. Thank y'all. You want to try one? Mm. Quite honestly, I cannot tell you anything about Marcona almonds because I have not researched it. I just know that I really like them. Mm. <laughs> and that's all that counts. And that's all that yeah, counts. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Good. So we're going to throw a yeah. few in here. Because who doesn't love a good... Those are a really good, good. Yes. Where do you get those? So I got those at Trader Joe's. We even have, we're not going to put these on the board, but we had some left over and we thought, why not set them out for the family? These are truffle Marcona almonds. Mm. Give that a go. I'm not. I love truffle. You guys can try it. I don't know how much. Is it mm. spicy? It's no. not spicy. It's, it's got just a very a strong flavor. It's just a different flavor. Want to try it? See, and I wonder, because you can get the truffle. You like it? Do you like it? I like it. Not so much, but you like it? Yes, girl. She's gonna be a charcuterie girl. Okay. She likes good flavor. Okay, and then also dried fruit is always a great option too. I've used jumbo golden raisins in the past, dried figs, dried apricots just really have a mild flavor and everyone seems to really, really love them. So they're always just a nice, nice addition to that, right? So you've got your nuts, you've got your dried fruit. Now we're gonna cut our strawberries. Again, for aesthetic purposes, it's really nice to keep the green on because again, you add more color to the board. Mm -hmm. And you don't have so I like to play with strawberries. I like to cut mine in half like this. Oh, okay, yeah. Again. And like you're you're making a flower. Oh, you know, is that what you meant by the heart? Mm -hmm. It looks like a heart. You're right, Opal. I I like that. Okay. So then I like to just, like you kind of place them like it's this. Like a butterfly. And this is. A, kind of like a butterfly. Yeah. This is just kind of, you have to just roll with it and mess with it. I, I will tell you, I struggle the most with my strawberries. I'm always, they're, they're kind of slippery sometimes and I'm always trying to make them look cakes, the best. Yes. You can um, like, cut them in half, Fearless. but you don't have, you can still use the green, but you don't add to. And then, like, if you lay them down, they can fall, but sometimes they don't. Okay. See? I'm still yeah. I'm still messing with this. And that's okay, because it just takes time. There we go. We're going to do one tiny little strawberry just to kind of bring it all together. Looking good. There we go. How does that look? That looks really good. good. So it's always a process in making, and she's you know rearranged a little bit. Yes. So, but that's what you do to make it personal. So we've moved around a little bit, but look how this is looking. Yes. So we we adjusted some things because I I I wanted to rearrange the colors a little bit. So we took the apricots and we moved them over here, adjusted the pepperonis, and we're adding in a few more grapes <laughs> in here to kind of just give us a little bit more, and then. We are going to fill in some more space. We're gonna add a few more almonds over here. Okay, and then we're actually gonna add a few more pickles over here because if I know anything about this Wrong family, pickles. they love the pickles. Okay, now if you wanna take a look at what we've got so far, from here, it's just a lot of garnishing. So we're just gonna add a few things to kind of just bring it together. We're gonna add some color over here with our limoncello almonds. And 
I, I'll probably put a few over here just to give it a little love. And then I always like to cut a few more strawberries and just randomly place them. And those lemon yellow almonds are very good. Mm hmm. So you can just kind of do whatever you want towards the end to bring it all together. I just, I really like the strawberry yeah, I like the touches. Color. Yeah, I like the colors of that. What do we think, Maybe. guys? Are we think loving looks, this board? It looks delicious. Yes. 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 We are loving this board. Oh, you know what? There was one other thing that we wanted to do. Hmm. this we're gonna put our little strawberry right there see look at that that looks great do we love it it yeah. looks great yay awesome job everybody's gonna love this so when everybody comes this will probably be woofed down fast with our crowd we'll show a picture of it later and then of course we all need a vessel to put our cheese and our meat on. So I'm gonna share some of my favorites. Wheat thins, I mean, who doesn't love a good wheat thin? These are actually rice crackers from Trader Joe's. They have the small and they have the medium. For your gluten-free friends, these are an awesome, awesome option. These are a rosemary cracker. They're delicious. These are a thin, thin cracker. I can't remember who makes these, but they also come gluten-free. I believe these are rosemary too. And this is Trader Joe's Summer Strawberry Watermelon Cracker, and they are delicious. I personally am a fan of the Trader Joe's crackers. Yeah, that sound, those sound good, and I've had the rosemary before. I love the rosemary oh, crackers. Oh, yeah. Yes, so yes. So those are really good. So we'll have an option of all of those. Yeah. I that really is be good. happy. <laughs> that is good. So we're lucky to have Angela and our family to make these type, this tray for all of us. And look how pretty that is. Isn't it gorgeous? So she actually, if, on Facebook, she's Smorgasbord. Smorgasboards.tx. And, it, and it's a page, you can look it up. And she actually, she's in the Dallas area and she does make them a very limited schedule because she does have another job. Mm -hmm. So she is available for certain events and stuff. And you can find her on there and contact her if you want to have a board made. And she'll, she'll kind of show, you'll see some of the boards you make yes. and then the time frames that you'll make them. And, and then they can get to, with you to see if you're available. Yes, I'm on Instagram as well, and the best way to contact me is through the email that's listed or the phone number, shoot me a text, what have you, and we can discuss what you're looking for. Well, that's awesome. Well, y'all, th we have more to come in our group later on. Luke, who did uh, the ceviche last year, is making his fajitas this year, just like you promised. So that will be later today. So you are with us on vacation. <laughs>